perfect. You know, we all love a good swimming pool in the summer, especially kids. But too many children are lost each year due to swimming pool accidents. In fact, it's the leading cause of death in children ages one to four. But I invented a device that can change all that. Now from the outside, it's just a simple device with a camera and a ring of status lights. But it's what's on the inside that's special. Now the device is housed in a 3D printed enclosure that I designed myself. And inside you'll find a Raspberry Pi Zero, a camera, and a buzzer for the alarm. Now the camera is surrounded by a ring of NeoPixels that communicate the state of the device, similar to Alexa. Now the device will pulse green if everything is working and no people are detected. Orange indicates that people are detected in the area, but no children are in danger. And as you might expect, pulsing red indicates that danger has been detected, a child has been found unattended by an adult, which potentially poses a risk. Now purple indicates the device is in sleep mode. This is to conserve energy in situations where it doesn't need to process anything. Now blue indicates there's a problem with the device and it's not functioning correctly. Finally, yellow indicates the device has been disabled by the user. Now disabling the device would have been done through the app. I mean, can't invent a device nowadays without an app, right? So here's the idea. The device should be set up by the pool where it can keep an eye on the area. Now, if your little one gets curious and wanders a little too close to the pool, that's when the device snaps into action and sounds off the alarms. And dad or mom can come in and save the day. That's the idea. Now, in case no one's in the area to hear the alarm, they'll also get an alert sent straight to their mobile phone. The idea here is to do anything we can to get people's attention and potentially save a life. All right, so here's the device. So you can see it's purple right now. That means it's sleeping. Now it's green. So that means it's processing, but it hasn't detected anything. So there's no danger, no people have been detected. All right, so now I'm gonna step in front of it and we should see, once it wakes up, and we'll see now, we'll see the color changed to orange. See, that means that it detected a person, but that person is an adult and there's no danger to a child here. So now I'm gonna back away and we should see it go back to a green to purple state. And there you go, green. Green means nothing has been detected, all clear. Now I'm gonna have my son walk in front of the camera. Stand there, stand in front of it. Stand in front of it where I can see you. Stand right here, stand right there. Go ahead, okay. Stand right there, stay. And there we go. See, it captured him. It knew he was unattended. There was no adult present. And here it goes, it found him again. So now I'll step in there. And then it just goes orange because there's an adult present. That's the idea. All right, so you've seen how the device works and we've talked about the hardware. But the real secret sauce is the AI algorithm that I built from the ground up. Now the process starts with the device taking a snapshot of its environment. From there, I use an off-the-shelf model to detect if there's people in the image. Now, each person detected in the image is first cropped and then fed to my custom algorithm. Now what this algorithm is able to do is it's able to take each image of a person and accurately predict whether or not it is an adult or a child. In fact, it can even predict whether or not they're in the pool. And this serves as the basis for this life-saving device. Now let's move on to the app. The app is how users will interact with and configure their device. Upon opening the app, users will be required to log in and authenticate. From there, they'll get a list of all devices currently registered to the app. This screen will show the name and status of each device and indicate whether it is online or offline. 
It will also take a current snapshot from each device and display it in a thumbnail. From here, users can click onto the thumbnail to get access to the various device settings. This is where users can edit the email addresses and phone numbers that receive alerts from the device. They also have the ability to toggle the various types of alerts on or off, as well as disable or enable the device itself, and even set the device sensitivity from this screen. The device also allows the parents to record a custom audio message to play in the event of emergency. And it even has a panic feature. So how does it all work? Well, the device and app communicate using MQTT, which is a lightweight messaging protocol that works on the publish-subscribe model. See, each device has a unique identifier associated with it, and a simple registration process from within the app associates the device with your account, and hence the app itself. Now, once a device is registered to your account, the app simply subscribes to the messages from that device, and then it's able to read and write settings to the device, grab images from the camera, etc. Then finally, the Cloud MQTT Broker handles the transmission of messages from between devices and apps. That's how it works. So what's next? Well, this device is going to be outside, so I'm going to have to have an enclosure that can stand up to the elements. Right now, using a 3D printed enclosure isn't going to cut it. I'm also going to need to spend time refining the model. Right now, the device can accurately predict the difference between an adult and a child about 87% of the time. So the model is good, but it needs to be great for this purpose. I've spent a lot of time collecting and curating data. In fact, I even developed a quick and dirty application to assist me in compiling a data set to use as training data for the model. Now, I've been working on this project for over a year and a half, but I seem to be stuck right now in terms of accuracy. I've painstakingly collected and reviewed thousands of images, but I've seemed to have gotten stuck at this 87% mark, so I'm going to have to spend time looking into that. I think this model is going to need to be in the mid to high 90s for this purpose. Lastly, I might have to research and look for some way to fund the project. To legitimately pull something like this off usually requires funding. Now I'll be sure to keep everyone updated, thanks so much for watching.